Welcome again to today's Fireside Chat, Alive in the Wild. We're so glad that you're here today to learn about the Wilderness Medical Society. I'm Kelly George, Director of Membership, Marketing, and Communications with the WMS. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to turn it over to our moderators for today. Linda, please take it away. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Linda Keyes. I'm an emergency physician uh, in Boulder, Colorado, and faculty at the University of Colorado, where I am the research advisor for the wilderness section in emergency medicine. I've been doing wilderness medicine research for many years. I've been involved in the WMS since the 1990s. I think I gave my first um, talk at, in 2000. I've been uh, on the editorial board of the journal, associate editor, chair of the research council, then on the board. Um, I love all things wilderness, but mostly if it involves snow, I'm a big backcountry skier and um, I'm reviving my mountaineering skills after a 20 year hiatus of raising my kids and uh, heading to Alaska this summer to try that again. Um, but mostly I just spend as much time as I can outside with my family. So excited to have you guys here today. Hi everyone, I'm Jamie Lieberman. I'm a retired anesthesiologist from Sun Valley, Idaho. And compared to Linda, um, I really wish I had discovered the WMS early in my career, but I actually discovered it quite accidentally in 2012. Um, so only nine years ago, and I've been a pretty active member ever since. At the WMS, I've been involved in helping with our guidelines, planning conferences, assisting with journal reviews, and I've been on the board for a number of years. Actually, this is my seventh year on the board. Um, and I, um, uh, I also help teach the diploma in mountain medicine. I'm passionate about the wilderness from Nordic and backcountry skiing. I run a men's Nordic ski team here in Sun Valley. Mountain, gravel, biking, rock climbing, kiteboarding, really whatever gets me into nature, but mostly it, it, it's an honor to be here with you all today and share some of what this great society has to offer. Renita. I must say everyone, I'm Renita Fonseca and I have the amazing honor and privilege of serving as the CEO of the WMS. I have been in this role, I'm, I'm the newest to this group, uh, only since late 2018, and, uh, but I have been in the association management profession my entire career. Um, I love working with nonprofit organizations, and it, it gives me an opportunity to work with incred incredibly dedicated volunteer leaders uh, like Linda and Jamie and so many others, and members um, like you who are passionate about their professions. Um, so I'm originally from Bangalore, India, and I moved to the U.S. when I was 16 years old. Um, my love for the outdoors really comes from uh, spending my summer holidays on our family's coffee estate, which was located in the mountains in South India. Uh, and it was surrounded by dense jungle and elephants and tigers and bison. Oh, my. <laughs> um, so I enjoy hiking, canoeing and, and really just traveling around the world. And now that we've gotten to know each other a little better, we thought it would be fun to get to know a few of our other WMS members. And you'll be hearing more from us in the next 20 or so minutes uh, from our perspectives. But these WMS members wanted to share a little bit about what the WMS means to them. So. At my first WMS conference, I went bobsledding, hiked this incredible peak, and went rock climbing. I also attended lectures on snake bites and envenomation, avalanche safety, and medicine in outer space. Over the course of the weekend, I discovered an incredible group of people who were not only accomplished, but welcoming. Everyone is respected equally regardless of the professional or academic qualification. I'm here in Israel discussing wilderness medicine with people from all over the world. In one conference, we had participants from literally all seven continents. WMS allowed me as a medical student to do research and create a publication on injuries and mountain bike racing. I got to participate in an elective with 30 students from around the world, which I'm now a director of. And you can come join in Virginia. I have 
I've also had an opportunity to earn a diploma in mountain medicine. And more importantly than anything else, I've met amazing friends and colleagues that are still a major part of my life. The benefit of WMS membership is the inspirational people that you meet. Our trekking to Everest Base Camp, we were led by Dr. Luann Freer, and she told us the story of Wangshu Sherpa. That inspired Dr. Tatiana Harverluk and I to start Musa Masala, a nonprofit organization. Uh, we wrote a book called Musa Masala Mountain Girl in the Himalaya. All the proceeds from that book go to the Wangshu Sherpa Memorial Hospital. I um, first got involved with the Wilderness Medical Society when I received a pamphlet in the mail to attend a conference. And I attended that conference and got really excited because I found out I could combine my um, profession with my passion for the outdoors. I've since gone on to achieve my diploma in mountain medicine and I'm working on my fellowship in the Academy of Wilderness Medicine. And it's completely changed the trajectory of my life. I'm now an educator in wilderness medicine and I love it. I wanted to be a member of a community that loved the outdoors and medicine as much as I did. And then I've continued to remain a member because I keep finding new opportunities and new connections and learning from incredible people. The FALM program is amazing, as are the student electives. And if either of those sound like something you would want to do, I completely encourage you to do so. You know, all the research they presented, uh, all the research they do, a lot of it done by the organization themselves, is uh, was fantastic. And it's stuff you can use for everyday hikes, as well as, uh, you know, long backcountry trips, or if you decide you want to go help out in, in the mountains of Nepal or anywhere else. Uh, I can't uh, say, uh, speak highly enough for, for uh, what I've experienced in the last year. So anyway, join up and uh, enjoy the ride. So before we jump into um, the Wilderness Medicine Society, I want to take a step back and just cover what wilderness medicine is. Um, there's a lot of ways to define it, and everyone you ask might tell you something different. But we at the WMS think the most accurate description is medical care delivered in those areas where fixed or even transient geographic challenges reduce the availability or alter the requirements for medical or patient movement resources. In simplified terms, wilderness medicine is medical care delivered amidst geographic challenges and limited resources or limited resources. This means that physicians, nurses, nurse practitioners, PAs, paramedics, EMTs, ski patrols, search and rescues, any healthcare provider who is faced with or might be faced with medical problems or emergencies in these kind of austere circumstances is welcome and invited to be part of our community. So where or how does the WMS fit into this definition of wilderness medicine? Why do we exist as an organization? Because we believe the wild keeps us alive. We are the WMS, a community of medical professionals devoted to facilitating high quality care in the outdoors. Our global membership and world renowned experts affirm our collective authority to set clinical standards and disseminate the most comprehensive array of wilderness medicine knowledge. Our innovative programs, publications, research, and certifications equip you with the tools to practice in any environment on or off the planet. Healthy lives are nurtured in wild places. Join us on the adventure and truly come alive. Our vision is to inspire you to be alive in the wilderness. That means anything from teaching you how to survive in the wild to encouraging you to find that work-life balance by taking refuge in the outdoors, a place we all love. It could mean teaching you how to do your job better. It could mean being better prepared so that you can treat someone in need during your next hiking trip or ski trip. The Wilderness Medical Society, we are guided by a set of established and aspirational beliefs which guide our behaviors. And those become the standards by which we operate, how we live out what we believe. 
And I want to share with you um, those core beliefs and standards. So, um, uh, and these are not necessarily in order. They're all very, very important to us. So inclusivity. Um, inclusivity, uproot barriers, not trees. Kindness, elevate others as you climb. Service, see the need, fill the gap. Nature, find your way in the wild. Education, seek knowledge, pay it forward. You'll see these core beliefs and standards sprinkled and populated throughout everything we do at the WMS. There's something really powerful about being a part of this like-minded community. I love the chance, the opportunity to gather with folks, learn, do, make the world a better place, all in relation to the wilderness and the outdoors. And that's a place that keeps me alive. Thank you, Jamie and, and Linda, for sharing a bit more about the what and the why of the WMS. They really are at the heart of everything that we do to help us achieve our mission, our mission statement, which is to encourage, foster, support, or conduct activities to improve the scientific knowledge of the membership and the general public in human health activities in a wilderness environment. So how do we go about achieving our mission? Well, we do it via the uh, various different programs, conferences, student electives, publications, research, certifications that equip you with the tools to practice in any wilderness environment. As you can imagine, all of these things take a lot of work and time to put together, and none of this would be possible without the tremendous vision and leadership of our amazing board of directors. These committed WMS members devote countless hours to providing strategic direction for our organization. And we, we invite you to visit uh, the About Us section of our website, WMS.org, to learn more about them. So now uh, back to how we go about achieving our mission at the WMS. The board oversees a variety of councils, committees, and special interest committees that help us achieve the goals of our strategic plan and our mission. So our work is carried out by five strategic pillars or councils. They are um, first the academy, conferences, education, research, membership. So those are the five pillars and we'll be breaking each of those down in more detail but here's a quick overview. The first pillar again is the Academy, which oversees our three certifications, fellowship in the Academy of Wilderness Medicine, the diploma in mountain medicine, and our very own diploma in diving and marine medicine. Our next pillar is conferences. In addition to annual winter and summer conferences held in great venues, we hold multiple exciting adventure CME trips. Yep, you heard right. You get to go on some amazing adventures and get CME credits for it too. How cool is that? Our next strategic pillar is education and includes our student electives, GME fellowships, and online learning. Research is a significant pillar and is something unique to the WMS. Our members conduct research and then this expertise is shared via our publications, such as the journal, our clinical practice guidelines, and our magazine. Membership is our last pillar, and this is another element that really sets us apart from other wilderness organizations. We are the largest nonprofit membership organization in the world dedicated solely to wilderness medicine. And as a membership organization, we offer many benefits for those who are part of our WMS community. And Kelly will go into some of those benefits in more detail in a little bit. Thanks, Renita. And keep in mind, like this is only a sampling of all that goes on for us. So, but I wanna tell you a little bit more about the Academy and the certifications that we offer. So first up is the fellow of the Academy of Wilderness Medicine. So this is a, a a program that takes three to five years to complete and requires a minimum of 95 credit hours in core topics, elective arenas, and experience. And basically what we're working towards is having you demonstrate a commitment to the knowledge, leadership, and service in the field of wilderness medicine. 
the diploma in mountain medicine. See, I've got my, it's got that same, no, here it is, that same logo. Um, I love the diploma in mountain medicine. The goal for this particular program, and it's an internationally acclaimed program, um, is to train the participant um, in the essentials of caring for patients in a technical mountain environment. So this is a program that um, goes on over two years and involves four weeks of training. And that includes a week each doing a week of rock rescue um, and crevasse rescue. And you learn all the components of rescue. It's really, really cool, really fun, amazing that we actually get CME credit for this stuff. Um, and you also uh, attend um, the winter and summer WMS conferences. And there's an avalanche rescue course in there. There's a lot of fun stuff. As Renita alluded to earlier, our own diploma in dive and marine medicine, this was felt to be lacking. And so we created this certification. This involves training the provider to care for patients in a marine environment, unlike the, unlike the diploma in mountain medicine. It involves three week long sessions over several years where you receive specialized training in diving physics, physiology and medicine. You'll learn to manage dive accidents, learn about hazards of marine environments, and a host of other critical marine medical skills. The diploma, this diploma also includes advanced certification in safety at sea and also diving. And you can learn more by visiting the certifications tab at wms.org. So lots, lots of cool certifications, regardless of mountains or marine or, you know, where your passions may lie, um, there's something for you. Um, our second strategic pillar and focus is conferences. Our winter and summer conferences uh, usually welcome about 300 attendees, but that was pre-COVID. Um, with COVID, when we went virtual, we had eight to 900 uh, attendees. And as Nadav mentioned, from uh, all seven continents. And that was just very exciting for us to be able to open up to our international membership. Um, these conferences um, are usually held in just beautiful mountain uh, towns. We are going to be going to Jackson, Wyoming, and Snowmass, Colorado in 2022. So uh, we're looking forward to that. And it's just a perfect combination of education and recreation. In addition to the expert lectures that we offer during these conferences, we also do small group discussions and hands-on workshops um, on different topics such as ISAC, self-arrest, and search and rescue. So just really cool, fun stuff. And of course, we always leave room for free time for your favorite outdoor sports, whether it's hiking or biking or skiing or whatever your heart may desire. So if you want to dive right into the WMS, I really highly recommend that you start by attending one of our conferences. It's really one of the best ways for you to get connected and learn a ton about a variety of different useful and very interesting topics. Again, if, if mountain's not your thing, you still get to hear about it, um, you know, space medicine. I mean, there's just some really neat topics uh, that you'll get to hear about. And this summer's conference is actually our last fully virtual conference and it's highly discounted. And so definitely take advantage of that. And if you wait until next winter uh, in 2022, we'll be um, try attempting our first hybrid conference. So people can join either in person or virtually, um, again, if travel and, and cost and such is, is a factor. Um, and as mentioned before, another very exciting component of our conference pillar are our adventure CME trips. Um, we offer week-long treks and camping in the canyonlands of Utah or the Appalachian Trail, uh, a sailing trip to the British Virgin Islands. Who wants to go on that? <laughs> um, and even two treks to Nepal. We have a spring trek to the Everest Base Camp and a fall trek to the Wangshu Sherpa Hospital. Um, and this is a hospital that the WMS is helping to build to provide health care to the underserved population there in the Khumbu Valley. So just um, I, I love the fact that we're involved in, you know, some humanitarian efforts as well. And in addition to um, you know, these memorable and fun adventures and making lifelong friends, again, the cool thing is you get CME for these trips and hands-on learning um, as well, not just sitting in a lecture. Um, so you can learn more about these on our events tab of the WMS website, and, and they're also on our homepage as well. Thanks, Renita. Um, yeah, I hope people come with me to uh, the Wangshu Memorial Hospital in Nepal in October. Hopefully things will be calmed down in uh, Nepal by then. So our next re our next pillar that I want to talk about. Um, well, first let me say that we're a 501 three nonprofit 
primarily because of our next pillar, which is education. We are dedicated to education. So in, a different, in addition to our conferences, the WMS hosts two student electives each year. One's in Virginia for students and residents, and the other is in Breckenridge for uh, fourth year medical students. We support a number of student interest groups from campuses across the planet. And the graduate med medical education for people who've already finished their training is also a big focus. So in addition to providing speaking opportunities for GME fellows, we recently introduced um, a new wilderness medicine GME fellowship program accreditation. So uh, if you are a medical trainee and you're looking to do a wilderness medicine fellowship, um, the WMS is setting the standards for what makes a great accredited fellowship program um, uh, for those academic postgraduate programs offering extra specialty training in wilderness medicine. Finally, the WMS has an extensive library of past recorded lectures, teaching scenarios, and community lectures all available to members. And you can learn more about these on the education tab of the website. Our fourth strategic pillar and, um, and focus is a personal favorite of mine, research. Our peer-reviewed journal, Wilderness and Environmental Medicine, is published quarterly and it offers members free CME and FOM credits for reading the articles. There's also a corresponding podcast you'll want to check out. The WMS are, um, comprises people who create and update clinical practice guidelines on a variety of topics on an ongoing basis. There's several ways to touch in, tap into all the research expertise within the organization. Every other month, we hold fireside chats, free webinars like this one, on a variety of research topics, such as mentoring, abstracts, grant writing. And if you can't attend one of those webinars, our Ask the Experts tool on the website allows members to reach out directly to people on the research committee to refine ideas, ask questions, and seek mentorship. And speaking of grants and abstracts, the WMS awards $30,000 every year in research grants. In addition, grant winners and other researchers can submit abstracts and present each year at our Summer Research Forum, which happens at the Summer Conference, where research committee, the Research Committee actually awards cash prizes to people who give the best oral and poster research presentations. Thank you, Linda. Um, and again, everyone, I'm Kelly George. I'm the Director of Membership Marketing and Communications with the WMS. And I wish I had an hour to talk to you about all the benefits of membership. Um, but today I'll cover just some of the highlights. So this was touched on previously, but um, as a result of being a part of our community, you'll receive discounts on event registration, such as our conferences and online education, and you'll receive free CME and FOM credits from the journal and podcast. Um, we actually also are doing a thank you to our members right now where everyone can receive two free lectures um, getting the free CME and FOM credit associated with those if you um, go ahead and check out by the end of this month. Um, as a member, you're eligible for that grant money and research mentors that Linda mentioned, and you can pursue those wilderness medicine certifications that Jamie mentioned. All of our cool adventure CME trips are also offered only to members and their guests. One of the biggest benefits to membership is our complimentary medical professional liability insurance. So it covers for you up to $50,000 with no monthly premium to cover your activities outside of the scope of your normal practice. This covers things like working in a medical tent at a race or serving in advisory capacities not covered under your typical individual malpractice insurance. If you're a frequent traveler, we have a unique relationship with Global Rescue, which allows WMS members to call their travel intelligence hotline at no charge and also set up various travel advisory alerts. These are really helpful for finding clinics or pharmacy overseas, learning about your destination's current COVID restrictions or any political unrest that you might want to be aware of in that location, for example. The last big member benefit that I'd like to cover is a fun one. If you shop brands like Mammoth, Liberty, or Black Diamond, you'll be pleased to know that we have a pro deal partnership with several organizations that offer discounts up to 40% off brands such as these and hundreds of others. We also have direct discounts with Icebreaker Merino and Gaia GPS. 
you can visit the member benefits tab under the about us on our website to learn more about these and other member benefits. Once you've joined, you'll be able to view all the access codes that are needed to utilize these deals. As you probably noticed from the video that we played at the beginning, one of the biggest benefits of membership is the connections that you'll make. Whether it's your next hiking buddy or research partner, you'll find friends and colleagues for life that share your passion for both medicine and the wilderness. We're almost 4,200 members strong and growing by the day. We recently formed a justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion committee, and the board adopted an inclusion statement last year. So we're working hard to make your organ our organization more diverse and representative as we grow. So if you aren't currently a member, there's a red join button at WMS.org for you to click on. Or if you're a new member, be sure to visit your member area on the members tab to take advantage of these benefits. Also feel free to reach out to me at any time with questions. My email is kelly at WMS.org. So K-E-L-L-Y at WMS.org. Wow, uh, that was a lot, Kelly. And as you can tell, there's just a lot going on. And we hope that wasn't overwhelming, um, but we did want to provide an overview of all that the WMS has to offer and hope that you're seeing the value in, in why you should be part of our amazing community if you're not already. And perhaps you learned a thing or two um, that you're not taking advantage of that you might like to in the future. Um, so again, in, in, in addition to finding more information on our website, I highly encourage you to reach out to our incredible WMS staff team with questions on um, any of this information that we've covered today. We have a, a, a team of four full-time uh, staff based here in Austin, Texas, and an additional five part-time staff that live across the U.S. from California to Colorado, from Utah to Kansas. Uh, so we're spread all, all across the U.S. and we're here to serve you. That's what we're here to do. Uh, you are our members. Um, it's the reason we exist. And so please feel free to reach out in, to any of us, and we're always happy to help you in any way we can. So yeah, we just covered a lot of information, um, and I want to open it up to you folks to ask some questions, but um, right before we do that, we have one final video to share. We feel this video captures the spirit of who the WMS is um, and why we do what we do. If you don't have any questions, feel free to drop off after the video. Otherwise, we're going to stick around for about 20 minutes. Um, we'd love you to turn on your cameras and uh, let's chat. We believe the wild keeps us alive. We stand for kindness, service, inclusivity, education, and nature. We elevate others as we climb. We see the need and fill the gap. We look to uproot barriers, not trees. We seek knowledge and pay it forward. We find our way in the wild. We are the Wilderness Medical Society, a community of medical professionals devoted to facilitating high quality care in the outdoors. Our global membership and world-renowned experts affirm our collective authority to set clinical standards and disseminate the most comprehensive array of wilderness medicine knowledge. Our innovative programs, publications, research, and certifications equip you with the tools to practice in any environment, on or off the planet. Healthy lives are nurtured in wild places. Join us on the adventure and truly come alive. Um, well, thanks again, everyone. Uh, please stick around if you have questions. Um, you can put them in the chat or feel free to um, uh, turn on your camera and unmute yourself and ask away. I, this, I think since we have a lull here, everyone's being shy. I know um, I'd love for Jamie to share this great story he has about his first WMS conference. Right. So thanks, Linda. So I, I just, you know, I had never heard of the WMS when I, when I, um, I was on a river trip on the Grand Canyon and I was thinking that I should get a woofer, but as a physician that didn't, 
I wasn't sure that was quite the right place to go. And so somebody said, well, you should go check out this place called the WMS. And I'd never heard of it. I looked it up online. I was living in Seattle and I called up the current CEO and he told me about this diploma in mountain medicine program. So I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a go. And I showed up at the conference having my own tiny little VRBO. I did not know a single person there. Um, and I remember going to see Peter Hackett uh, talk about high altitude medicine and talking with him afterwards as we do when we get to be in person at these conferences. So I ended up going to lunch with him and a couple other people. He gets this phone call. He says, hold on a second. And, um, and then he says, well, I'm going to call you back in a few minutes later. And he says, okay, so there's this person that's stuck on Denali and I have to decide whether or not to, to, to um, send a helicopter for him. What would you do? Right. And, and that was, you know, little did I know at the time that he's one of the big names in wilderness medicine, but the, I, I'm, I, I love the approachability of so many of the people here. And, and it really goes back to what I love to do is gather with people with like minds and how do we bring, how do we, how do we learn and pay it forward? We get to get, we make new friends, we gather, we create guidelines, we share it. It's just so much fun. Um, and, you know, well, you can see me smiling, like <laughs> it's a ball. Um, but uh, let's see. So there's a couple of questions starting to pop up there, Linda. Are you seeing them? Um, how, how do current come? members take advantage of the two free lectures? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, so I think Michelle sent out the link to our last Trailblazer newsletter. So if you guys aren't connected already with our newsletter, I'd highly recommend um, getting on that because we send out lots of important information and announcements. Um, but it has the link there to the two courses. Um, one is When the Ocean Attacks and the other is a series of limb-threatening events. Um, you'll just add those to your cart and can use the discount code THANK YOU. I believe it's a capital T, capital Y, uh, but maybe Michelle can type that code in there just to confirm. Um, and then both of those will be free. Again, that is a thank you to our members. So um, that code will only um, take away the, the fee if you are a current WMS member. Um, those online lectures are normally $60 a piece uh, for non-members and $50 for members. So it's a savings of about $100. And that's good through um, the end of this month. All right, show of hands. Oh, oh, go ahead, Linda. Just a show of hands. How many folks have attended a WMS conference? Some people are going to have to use your reaction tab or turn your camera on. So a handful. There we go. Linda's being yeah. brave and turning her camera on. Yeah. Would anyone like to um, share how wonderful it was for them? I'm going to be brave and do it as an attendee. Uh, so I, my first um, conference was 2005. And uh, I believe it was in New Mexico. And my husband is, is on right now in another room. So they can validate. But anyway, uh, we had such a wonderful time. We went because I, I'm a nurse and, and I needed uh, nursing credit and I can certainly use contact AMA hours um, as well. Both of us uh, are EMTs as well. And we're members of the National Ski Patrol. So we were looking at the brochure and we said, wow, uh, there's a lot of really cool things in this. And uh, we went, and actually, as it, as it turned out, I don't believe it was the WMS version, but WMS was there. So that's actually how we joined WMS, but a lot of the speakers from WMS were there. And we wound up on that very first uh, uh, time signing up for the fellowship. And we started pursuing that, and it took us five years because we both worked full time. Uh, my husband is also an environmental scientist. So I'm just going to add that for him. He's, he's, he knows I always jump in. So uh, the content was perfect. It was perfect in every way. It helped us with ski patrol. It helped us in all of our pursuits because we're big hikers and backpackers. And we love the winter environment especially. And um, we were hanging on every word. And we started meeting people. And it just put us on this path of being super involved 
Um, so now I'm on one of the guidelines teams, uh, have done a whole lot of work with the WMS in terms of teaching at the student elective and things of that nature. And it's just been fun. So that's um, so great to hear, Linda. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I might add that, you know, you can get um, wilderness medicine CME credits from other organizations, but ours tends to be cheaper because we're a nonprofit. We're really here for you. I see that Ross put on his WMS hat. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone else yeah, want to share? And we do have swag. <laughs> Yeah, I see Chris, uh, Chris shared that he attended the student elective in 2009 uh, and co-taught in 2013. And I had a chance to go peak for a day or two, um, you know, in, in the student electives, one in Virginia and the Breck Wild in Colorado. And it's just, I mean, I, I'm just kind of bummed that I'm not a student and I can't just go do that. It just looks like a fabulous experience. So if, if there's students out here or residents, um, do please check those out. Just wonderful opportunities to just make great friends, you know, to go learn hands-on skills, go camping, go hiking. Um, they got us up in the middle of the night one time for a rescue, you know, scenario, and that was a lot of fun. Um, so definitely encourage you. Uh, Chris, if, if you uh, want to share more about that or if there's any other questions or any other experiences anyone, anyone else would like to share, oh, there's Chris. Yep. I did it in 2009. Uh, Tom Kessler, I think, was the site director. It was an incredible experience. Um, great people, uh, other students to work with, some residents. Um, went back in, I think it was 2013, actually. Um, I actually convinced my program or my residency director to let me go because purely Lou Ann Fear was going to be there. I said, where else am I going to ever learn for, except for the person who sees it probably more than anybody? And that was like my selling point. And only the program director was on board. All the other doctors were against it, but she was in charge. So um, it was a great month. We're kind of learning how to teach. Um, like I said, I can't say enough about Tom. He's a great person. <laughs> Sorry. The um, kind of try to stay as involved as I can. It's kind of hard with work and family and kids. I think we can all appreciate that. Um, trying to get out involved with more of the committees. WMS has got a lot out there. It's just trying to find your niche in there and I don't know. I, I think it's a great organization. I support it and hopefully we can keep growing as a group. Thank, thank, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. And, and you mentioned a good point. You know, I think um, different members in different phases of their careers, of their lives will, you know, pop in and out, be more involved or not. Uh, but we really hope we have something for everyone, regardless of where you are in your career, if you're just starting out and, you know, at the student elective level, or if you're, you know, accomplished and want to do the research and get into that, or, um, you know, share your expertise as, as a speaker at our conference or lead an adventure trip. We've started, a, you know, a, a member driven, um, you know, a create your own adventure type program where members, uh, one of our members just came up with an ice climbing trip. Um, and, and, and we will work with them to, again, help them share their passion with the other members. So this really is all about members and uh, members sharing their passion and expertise with others. So, um, Let's Kiara, see. Kiara had a great question on um, being able to uh, opportunities to get involved with the Wilderness Medicine magazine. So that's our online kind of uh, current um, uh, articles. And absolutely, Kiara, we are always looking for new people to par participate and contribute. And there's a number of different ways that you can get involved. Uh, we have a handful of quarterly articles that people take charge of to help find others. If you need mentorship in terms of learning to write better, we have that as well. So I, as Renita was kind of alluding to, all of us here in, in our community are at different levels and have different levels of expertise. And we enjoy teaching and we enjoy learning. And um, if, you, if there's a topic that you want to write about, I ended up writing for the Wilderness Medicine Magazine um, when the founder of the North Face died a number of years ago, Doug Tompkins, um, and relating that directly to hypothermia. And it was uh, an opportunity for me to learn a lot and cement some of my knowledge about hypothermia. But I also happened to have a, a friend on that trip and was able to kind of personalize it and write it. And I didn't do a very good job and got to work with Seth Hawkins and make it a better article. Um, so there's 
sky's the limit here, folks. There's so many different, you know, whatever your interest is, we can we can tap it and and help you go to the next step um, in your learning. And and by your participation, we get to learn from you too, which is what in my mind makes us such a great society. Yeah. And so if you have an idea for an article, I would say go ahead and pitch it. Just send them an email. They love to get those pitches. Yeah, and we have submission guidelines available online that might be helpful to take a look at. Um, so for anyone interested in the magazine, it's just wms.org slash magazine. Or if you go to our homepage, there's a, a big red button, I believe, to click on. Um, and as Janie mentioned, we have quarterly columns, um, but we're always accepting featured articles. Um, so there's the submission guidelines if you want to take a look at those. Um, and then we also have a breaking news team. Um, so if we, um, if you are interested in writing kind of about current events and just brief stories, um, so there's a lot of different opportunities there. I just want to say uh, to Connor, who wrote, I am an EMT for what that is worth. What was taken off the editing process for my video is that I said that what's great about the WMS is people are angry at me when I say I'm just a simple EMT. So if you're asking the people here, the doctors, what is an EMT worth? And they will say a lot. So, you, so there's no such thing for what this is worth for. And as an EMT myself, I can say that uh, uh, we are treated as, uh, as doctors and nurses and paramedics. And within the committees I'm involved in, we are working for opportunities that will be um, relevant also for EMTs because I know that it's very difficult to come by. I can't say anything regarding Florida. I'm on the other side of the planet, uh, but yes, uh, EMTs and, uh, and experience opportunities and medical knowledge, all of that are things that we are dealing with uh, uh, in the different committees, at least those I'm involved in. Thank you, Nadav. That's great. I think wilderness medicine, um, you know, a lot, a lot of us are emergency physicians, although we have like pretty much every specialty rec uh, represented, including things you might not expect like OBGYN. But um, like emergency medicine, wilderness medicine is a team sport. Um, and we need all levels of providers, both um, participating, educating, working together. Uh, yeah, this is- um, And actually that's a team. That's yeah, that's one of the things I think that makes us unique. There's a lot of professional organizations that are only for physicians. And uh, this is one of the few organizations that I know that, you know, embraces all the different levels um, of practitioners. And so I think that's what's exciting is that we can all work together and learn from each other. And at the WMS, really, titles don't mean much. And that's why we're on a first name basis. That took me a long time to, to not have to say Dr. Keys and Dr. <laughs> Lieberman. Um, but it is a very informal formal place where all are welcome. So uh, thank you, you know, Connor. And again, I, I'm, I don't have opportunities, uh, you know, for S Florida specifically, but in our conferences and our summer conference, we're going to be um, having a networking session where we're uh, breaking up the attendees by region. And so hopefully you can network with other folks in your area and learn uh, of opportunities. Um, uh, social media is always a great way to get in touch and post, you know, hey, I'm in Florida. What, what, what opportunities do you know of? And those kind of things have really helped uh, give people some ideas. Kelly, I don't know if you have any other suggestions as well. Yeah, I was going to recommend um, checking out our community calendar. So if you click on the events tab on our website, um, it has a drop down there for our community calendar. And we have um, probably 20 or 25 affiliates um, that uh, are organizations that have some sort of relationship with us and they add their events to our calendar. Um, so that might be one place that you could check um, if you are a FOM candidate, um, we have a, um, a tab for the eligible activities, and you can sort that by location and find um, which uh, courses might be in your area as well. Great. Thanks, Chris Davis, for your comment about um, I also uh, the teaching coming from the instructors, and as well as the diversity of everybody there. And I, I just, I, uh, Nadav, I appreciate your you're talking about the, the EMT component because we've almost started to go away from, or I have, uh, I think a number of us have to go away from putting the letters at the end of our name um, because we are all, I, I just, I don't know where I'm gonna learn the next piece of 
really useful, relevant information. And it doesn't necessarily relate to the letters after someone's name. And people, you know, we have people with all sorts of letters involved in writing the guidelines and involved in medical direction and co-direction. Um, so I, I think it's a fallacy to think that to be, uh, to participate deeply in wilderness medicine, you need to have an MD or a DO after your name. That is absolutely not true. And it doesn't fit with our beliefs. We are excited to be here and, and learn from people and, and move this ball collectively forward together. Yes, I, I just want to say, as an EMT, this I think was the first time I actually had those letters after my name publicly and the form. And, um, and the fact that I could continue a fellowship even without being a medical student, uh, that was a great experience. For me, the WMS was... Um, was a, um, a great opportunity because I used to be a medical student until health declined and that affected my studies and I had to stop my medical studies. And, and I could continue my fellowship and continue my medical uh, education without being a medical student. And for all those medical students out there, if you, you went to medicine to help people, if you really want to help any person, any place, any case, then the WMS is where you can actually learn to do it. Uh, for me, wilderness medicine is me any medicine without outside the comfort of modern medicine, which is what medical schools deal with. But if you're outside uh, the hospital, how do you really help a person when he really, really needs it? And, and, and here in the WMS as an EMT, I suddenly found myself, I'm probably going to review things I never thought I'll do such a thing before a PhD. And, uh, and when I started the wilderness medicine uh, interest group in my medical school at the time with a colleague of mine, it was the most successful group, uh, interest group because people really wanted to be able to help people with things you do not learn in medicine, in medicine, in medical school. So unlike other interest groups, this is something which really has added value uh, which unfortunately is not given the proper uh, inclusion in the current curriculum as far as I can see. Thanks for that, Nadav. Thank so you. some of the upcoming events um, are now on the screen with our calendar, and we'd love to have you folks participate. And uh, so check that out and um, uh, have a great day. And thank you for being here. Are there any last questions? Questions or comments from anyone? Uh, Thank you for your time. Yeah, th thanks for being here. And we hope we'll see many of you at the virtual conference uh, coming up here in just a, a few weeks, uh, June 27th through July 1st. Um, again, a wonderful, if you liked what you saw today, interacting, uh, we have breakout rooms where you actually get to talk one-on-one, -on -one, turn your camera off. It's not just kind of a one-way presentation. Um, so definitely, definitely check that out and we'd love to see, see you again. Stay in touch. Thank, thanks, Larry, for um, talking about how fun our CME is. Thanks, folks. Look forward to seeing you in person, I hope, at some point in the not too distant future, although uh, our February conference will be both virtual and live. So if you're in Florida and can't find your way to Jackson Hole, you may still be able to participate or and, Antarctica. Yeah, and we hope to see you uh, online in, in, at the end of June. All right, thanks everyone. We will um, be sending up a follow-up email with the recording as well as some of the links that we shared today. Um, thanks again for joining. We really appreciate it and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye everyone.